everybody. Today we're going to be making a, um, a convex funnel pour swirled soap and I'm going to be using some red clay. And this is from Rainforest Chica and white clay for color and I'm using some indigo too which I've kind of pre-mixed with some oil in there. And here's the red clay which I've mixed with Takuma oil. I had used these colors like a week ago, but I wasn't quite pleased with how the design came out, so I'm trying again to get cool colors. I'm hoping for like a red, white, and blue, but I'll probably get an orange, tan, and gray. But it's fun to try, so we're gonna go ahead and do this. I have my oils all melted and ready to go. I'm gonna go get my lye. I'm gonna mix this in. This is a six pound batch that we're making today. And we're gonna mix two light trace because I want it to be a fairly thin trace. And I have some essential oils here that I'm gonna mix in as well. These are, it's lavender, anise star, and a little bit of benzoin. I've never done a mix like this. But I know that these essential oils do work um, well and so they don't uh, accelerate trace. At least in my experience. Let's hope it doesn't do that today of all days. I am soaping fairly hot. Well, like medium. Not as hot as I usually do, yet not as cool as I should for a design like this. But. My blender's making some funny noises. And it's fairly new, it still has a sticker on it. Okay, I'm gonna pour some of this into my colors. And we're hoping for a nice red, not orange. Oh, it looks orange. Anyway. And then for the blue. This is indigo. And the rest of this I'm going to add white clay to. I'm going to add a, probably about a tablespoon. And it's probably about mm, three and a half pounds in there. So now we're going to be starting the pour. So I just have this cube mailing box. It's the perfect size for I, this design and I have a water bottle here that's filled with water to give it some weight because if there's no water in it, as you poured soap it would start to go up and get tippy. <laughs> and I know that from experience. So again I was hoping for a red, white, and blue but it looks like I'm gonna get an orange, gray, and tan which is fine. And just alternating colors, we're going to pour. And I will be gelling this, so maybe some miracle will happen. And the shades will turn. I mean, they're pretty colors, even if it's not going to be what I envisioned, which is fine. I'm going to try to do a little bit more white on each pour than the other colors, because the other... I find colors in soap can easily overtake the white and so, I don't know, I just tend to use less colors and a little more white to bring out the design more. And this time I taped down the sides on my box so it won't get caught on fire like in my other video. I need to have my husband make me a mold this size so I can stop using government property. Repurposed. It's a used one, so I can't be charged with fraud or whatever. I should just stop talking. And of course I've put this box, my mold, on a baking sheet so that when it comes time to move it around it won't, it'll be a lot easier. It'll give it a solid bottom so I don't have to worry about it or my tape breaking loose on the bottom and soap gushing everywhere, which would be absolutely awful.
So I'm expecting my batter to get pretty thick fairly fast because I'm not soaking cool. I do have a water discount of 34%, which is not a huge discount, but it's still a discount. And I'm using a high percentage of clays for the color. So I should probably start working faster. see how the colors are going to differ. But first I'll work on the center here, make it look a little more appealing. And if you wanted to do like a flower design, you'd stick this, this pin, pin, yeah, this uh, thingy, stick, chopstick. I, down to the bottom and just like move it in and move it in and, and do your designs. I had another video um, showing that it was a convex funnel pour. So just look for it on our, our Sniff YouTube channel because it's there. Um, but I think I'm gonna keep the bottom underneath the soap just however it is that it's poured. And I'm just gonna do the top. I'm just gonna insert a little bit so that when I I'm barely touching the surface. I don't know, do I want to go all the way down? I don't know, maybe we'll go all the way down on half of it? Oh, I'm terrible. I should just make up my mind. So just gonna go all the way down, moving towards the center. I don't remember where I did or didn't do. All right, we'll just keep it like that. Good, it's good. Good enough. And I'm gonna go ahead and jealous. I'm gonna heat the oven to 170 and put this in. I probably won't be able to cut it until tomorrow because it holds its heat a lot longer than a loaf because it's a cube, obviously, so the surface area is not so great so the heat stays in for a little while longer. So we're gonna do that, and I'll come back later. Uh, two and a half hours later, I just, it's gelled, and I've taken it out of the oven and it didn't overheat. I had only turned the oven on to 170 degrees Fahrenheit for about five to 10 minutes, and then I turned the oven off, and then it's been sitting in there since then. So, well, it's in the afternoon, but we'll cut this in the morning. And I can't wait. This is the moment I've been waiting for all night. So, it's first thing in the morning. I woke up kind of early because I want to come cut it. This is my soap block right here. And we're gonna find out if I sh if I should have like stuck the skewer in there, the chopstick, the pin, whatever you call it, and done the extra design, or if I should have just let it be. when I was hemming and hawing. Looking okay. Looking promising. This looks like the part that I didn't touch with the chopstick. 